is a prototype Steinberger headless base made in the year 1978. According to Ned Steinberger, this is one of only three that he produced with an experimental acrylic core. And it still features a design remarkably like those he produced later. Uh, it lacks the flip lever foot or leg rest that the later ones had on this side because this is fine for playing standing up, but for playing seated, it, the others are a little bit easier to hold if you flip out the lever and it will hold it in position more as though it had a standard size body. Steinberger designed a unique tuning mechanism so that the strings were double ball end and but on this one actually it has screw down where it locks this one does not require ball ends his later ones had ball ends on each end but and they need special Steinberger strings but this you can just clip the strings tighten this down and it will hold the strings in place it has two EMG pickups but the owner didn't like the bridge position pickup and he had Ned put a different pickup also EMG in this position but this modification was done by Ned himself for the original purchaser the acrylic has shipped here which is something his later versions wouldn't do but this is historically still a very significant instrument Steinberger won design awards for his work and he was a true pioneer for headless designs although I can't claim he was the first ever for example in the 1930s Rickenbacker had a headless electric violin produced with black Bakelite. So in its own way, it looked as futuristic as this. But the Rickenbacker had tuners also down at the body end, but used standard violin pegs. So it had tuning mechanism down at the bottom of the body. This is a more compact design. And these instruments caught on remarkably well. During the 1980s, Steinberger was producing instruments that not only won awards, but were used on stage by a remarkable number of musicians, many of whom were quite noted. So this instrument brings a whole new aesthetic into bass design but also Ned was a big proponent of graphite. So Ned promoted these instruments not only as ergonomically friendly, but also as eliminating problems that bass players had with wolf notes. On a guitar, the resonant general response of the body and neck does not contradict or conflict with the frequency of string vibration, but on basses there are certain frequencies that the neck and body resonate at the same frequency as the string and will just simply eat that note resulting in dead spots on the fingerboard. This is a problem bass players have that in general guitar players do not face. The graphite construction that Ned uses does not resonate at the frequency of wood and is acoustically quite neutral. On an electric instrument, this can result in a bass without any dead spots or wolf notes. And a wolf note is a different situation. A wolf note is a note that is unnaturally loud, 
where it is amplified by the frequency of the body. So basses have the problem, some notes are out of proportion too loud and others are out of proportion too quiet because of the resonant frequency of the neck and body. On the Steinberger, the response is much more even. So Steinberger is still with us today as a maker, no longer producing this model, but he's producing upright electric basses and cellos in four string and five string models, as well as electric violins. And his violins are still a very avant-garde futuristic design, as are basically all the instruments he's ever done. Uh, Ned is trained as an engineer and also has a background in furniture design, which gave him an interest just in ergonomics. So while he himself was not a player, he was very much concerned with structural engineering and ergonomics and worked closely with musicians. And in that sense, much like Leo Fender or John D'Angelico, who also were not players, but still produced great instruments, Ned, from the start, worked very closely with musicians and to this day continues to do so.